If you think about all the different ways that we have to market now in 2023, when I started photography, there was no email, there was no websites. It was literally one hard copy portfolio, if you were lucky enough to have a hard copy portfolio, and you would literally use your telephone, because when I started again, there was no cell phones. It's, I'm making myself sound old, but I am old. I'm older, likely older than you. And basically, <laughs> photography back then was manual. We shot film. We called people. We printed our portfolio. We put them in cases, and we physically moved to the location, and we showed our portfolio. And another person wanted to see our book at the same time oh my god two people seeing your portfolio at the same time impossible that's never ever 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 gonna happen so today we are talking about marketing and promotion because in 2023 the energy as far as how we need to go about marketing ourselves <clears throat> excuse me, marketing ourselves as photographers is so different. It's so different than it used to be. So today we are getting directly into marketing and promotion. I have a simple business plan idea for you guys to, I think, uh, take on. I think, uh, what's the good word? Um, assume. You can assume this business plan. <laughs> I would start using it right away. All right, we're getting into Marketing 101 for photographers. Hope you guys are ready. All right, so first thing that I would recommend as a photographer, if you are trying to market yourself right now, 2023, first thing I would say, specialize. That's the thing that I believe is the quickest way for you to go from obscurity to people knowing who you are as a photographer. The first, and I would say, number one thing, whew, I don't know why I'm so warm today. Thank God I'm wearing a t-shirt and not a hoodie. Specialize. Specializing in a specific niche or style of photography can help you stand out from the crowd. It can help you develop a unique style, unique brand, unique image and it makes it easier for clients to find you focusing on a specific type of photography can help you build your expertise in an area it also lets you hone in on your craft and become an expert in your field being an expert in your field in your area of photography increases your credibility and increases your demand as a photographer specializing in a particular niche by the way, YouTubers, the word is niche. It's not niche. Niche would be spelled N-I-T-C-H. <laughs> it's niche, like N-E-E-S-H. Specializing in a particular niche can help you attract clients who are specifically looking for your type of photography. It can help you build a loyal client base that values your expertise and style. By specializing, you can position yourself as a premium photographer and charge higher rates for your services. Clients are often willing to pay more for photographers that specialize in a particular niche <laughs> as they perceive them to be experts in their field. It's very important. Clients are always going to pay you more if they think that you're a specialist, if you are a specialist. Also, specializing in a particular type of photography can help you find more enjoyment in your work. When you're passionate about the type of photography that you shoot, you're kind of going to make more of that photography. You're kind of going to feel fulfilled and you're going to feel motivated to con continually improve and grow that photography business. For me, I specialize. I'm a people specialist. So when I started as a photographer, I started shooting fashion. I was a fashion photographer, a fashion specialist. The first bit of personal work or thing that I added to shooting fashion was portraits. So I shot portraits and fashion. Fashion in a magazine editorial way. And my portraits ended up being in a 
magazine-y, stylish kind of way. So I figured out a way to add something to my work that I could still make look like my style, but it was me doing now less than 1% of the population looks like models. So I'm trying to make a living shooting models. For me, it was smarter to make a living shooting all the rest of the people that were out there. When I started to do that, when I added portraits to my specialty, that's really when my stuff started to blow up. All right, so that's the first thing that you guys need to think about is specializing. I highly, highly recommend specializing. Just a little sidebar, if you're in a smaller market, it might be harder to specialize in like one particular thing if that's the case, if you're in a small town, if you're in a smaller market, my suggestion is categorizing your work, having a website where you have categories. So if you shoot weddings, if you shoot engagements, if you shoot babies, if you shoot um, family portraits, if whatever those categories, keep your work categorized. So when someone comes to your work, they, they're coming to you to shoot one thing, Usually when an individual wants to hire you, they're not asking you to shoot 20 things or asking you to shoot one. So if you are in a smaller market and it's harder for you to make it as a specialist, make sure your website is categorized really specifically. So your one website looks like many different mini websites, all targeted to a specific type of photography. All right, so number two, and very, very important, we have to define, we have to get our pen to work. We have to define our market. Defining your market is as simple as who would hire me? Who would hire me to be a photographer? Who would hire me to take photos? Before you start marketing your photography services, it's important to decide or figure out who it is that would hire you. Consider the type of photography that you've now decided to specialize in and the types of clients that you'd like to work with. This is going to help you tailor your efforts to the right audience. How I specialize, again, I just spoke to you about shooting people and specializing in people, but how I would define my target market. Here's an example. I shoot fashion. I shoot headshots. I shoot portraits. I'm walking down the street, I see a new hair salon that just opens. That new hair salon has empty walls. They have ads in the window for they're looking for stylists. A couple of weeks go by, now that hair salon is populated. They're in there, they're cutting hair, the walls are bare, there's nothing in the storefront. Okay, so you walk in, you have your laptop or you have your phone and you're like, oh my God, welcome to the neighborhood. You have a beautiful salon. I notice your walls are empty. Please let me shoot some new photographs of your customers with their brand new haircuts and frame them and put them all around your salon as well as in your window. It's going to attract people walking down the store now that you have a storefront and um, it's going to make your salon look amazing. It's going to make your customers feel happy because there's photographs of other customers on the wall. It's going to make them feel like they're part of a community. Let's shoot. Can we shoot something? Like, that's how you define a market, see an opportunity, and Jen, act on it. We have to do this not just physically in person when we're walking around our neighborhood, but we have to also do that online. You have to also do that with LinkedIn. You also have to do that with Facebook. Do that with Instagram. Create a bookmark, um, a bookmark folder on your um, Safari or Chrome or whatever web browser you look at. And as you're doing research, start saving websites for people who could be potential clients. Start building out a folder of people who you could work for or people who you'd like to work for. That's who you now start targeting, start reaching out, start sending email promos to. And those are the people who eventually you're going to start working for because you're targeting them. Your specialty fits what they need. You're reaching out to them. You're enthusiastic and that will equal jobs. So defining your target market is an incredibly important thing to do. Let me hide your camera so you can get the full effect of my chicken scratch. Next, very, very, very important. Your 
portfolio website. Your website is as important as your next breath. If you're a photographer and you are using Instagram as your website instead of a website, a domain, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. First of all, um, I own my website. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't own my website, so he has no control as to what I put on there. A portfolio website is the first step in building your online presence. Make sure your website showcases your absolute best work, your best presence. You can use website builders like Squarespace. Um, I use Adobe Portfolio. This stuff is easy. The reason that I'm sighing is because so many photographers get bottlenecked at the place that I'm talking about right here, which is creating a portfolio website. That's the spot that photographers get stuck. Usually in they create work, they create work, they create work, they post to Instagram, and then they just have folders and folders of work that's like all over the place. And they have the single picture that they posted, but there's nothing organized for them to be able to see what they've shot, to be able to see how they're progressing. So it's super, super, super important for you to build a portfolio website if you haven't yet. Make sure your website showcases your absolute best work and is super easy to navigate. I also recommend using Adobe Portfolio because it's so easy, because it also incorporates with another incredibly important website, which is called Behance. Behance, sorry, I'm taking, I have the fastest internet in the world. Why is this taking so long to load? <laughs> wow. Behance is a showcase for photographers, for creatives, for art directors, for illustrators to kind of find each other, to find buyers, to find um, photo editors. Let me just go to Behance again. I'm not sure. There we go. There we go. So Behance, I would highly recommend you guys join Behance. Behance also is like, it's not Instagram. It's Instagram on steroids. If you just quickly go here, this is just a little bit of a sidebar, but the reason that I use Adobe Portfolio, first of all, we're paying for it already, okay? Paying for Adobe Portfolio already. Adobe owns Behance. Behance is set up as a creative showcase for you to sell stock photography, for you to basically be discovered by other creatives. If we look at the best of Behance right now and we look at photography, you're going to see that the level of photography here, this is an Instagram. Like this is incredibly, incredibly high end, very, very well done, award winning photography. So, this is portfolio level photography. This is where I share my work as like a social media site. Because Adobe owns this and Adobe owns Adobe Portfolio, Adobe Portfolio is how you can basically use this as your web builder. The two sites work together. So as you put work on your website, it also is updating on Behance. Also, when you're on Behance and say, I'm an art director from, uh, China, and I'm looking for a photographer in Toronto to hire, you can just search Toronto photographer. And it's going to give you the latest projects. Hey, there's Julie. It's going to give you the latest projects from photographers in Toronto for you to look at. This is art directors, clients, they're looking here to find photographers from other markets. So as much as important as your portfolio website is, I'm a strong believer in using the Adobe products and using the services that Adobe's put forward for us because the incorporation between Behance and your website is so seamless. Um, it's kind of a no brainer. If you look at my Behance profile, you'll see I have 
uh, a selection of different projects. If you go to my website, which obviously is linked, and then you go to my commissions and you go to my latest project, it's actually the latest thing that I put on Behance is this project here. So if you see it here on Behance, it's the same project on my website. I just uh, did the order on my website just a little bit different. So portfolio website. Also, after you build your portfolio website, a lot of photographers don't know that you actually have to submit your website to Google. Like submit your website to Google, do a quick Google search, how to submit a new website to the Google search engine. It'll provide a link. You post your stevecardi.com or whatever your new website link is. And Google now knows it's a website. It knows where it is and it will continually now index it and look for new content. So if you haven't, if you have a website and you haven't indexed it with Google, that's another secret sauce. Make sure you do that. All right, so that is building a portfolio website. Next, we need an online presence, okay? We need a strong online presence. Now, what do I mean by online presence? What do I mean by not being able to spell? There you, oops, there you go, online presence. Today, having a strong online presence is kind of crucial for a photographer. We have to use websites, obviously. We have to showcase our work, obviously. We have to use social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook to promote our photography and engage with potential clients. When I say we have to build a strong online presence, I mean we have to have our stuff on the internet. That means we should be blogging. That means we should obviously have a website. We should be submitting to other places. We should be trying to collaborate with other creators. Anything that we can be doing to get our work on the internet with our meta tag and data baked into our photographs with links back to our website where the work um, lives, we have to build an incredibly strong online presence. I've been building my online presence since uh, 1997 was my first website. The year that I shot Tom York was 1997. That was the year that I dropped stevecardi.com. So I've had stevecardi.com since 1997. So I have a strong online presence. And I think it's super important for you to as well. The next thing which it just rolls into an online presence is just how to use social media. We need to be using social media, whether we hate it or not. It's super, super important. Thank you so much, Casper. Whether we think we need to use social media or not, it's so absolutely important in 2023. We have to use Twitter. Twitter is one of those things where Twitter's news. Many people might not be into Twitter just as a platform, but as an alternate place to post that's not Instagram, that doesn't censor any of your content if you have a beautiful nude that you want to post that you don't want to worry about being like flagged or you can post to twitter there's an incredibly large community of photographers on twitter and also twitter is a great a great aggregate to if you post a youtube video if you post something on your website if you post something anywhere else twitter is a great place to aggregate all of your different posts from all of your different social platforms. That's what I use. I use Twitter as an aggregate. Facebook is obviously for an older demographic. So your parents are on Facebook. People who are um, age uh, 15 to 25 aren't really messing with Facebook. Facebook is sort of the generation that's kind of older. But if that's your demo, if you're trying to shoot weddings, if you're trying to shoot portraits, if you're trying to shoot within that people space and most of the work that you're doing is um, person to person, it's just somebody who likes your photography is hiring you to make photos of them. If that's the case, I highly recommend 
using Facebook as a place. Start a page for your photography business. And again, use Facebook then as an aggregate where you can also feed content that you're doing in other places there. But you can also use Facebook for networking. And that's something that's super important. Join photography groups. Join, there's places who are looking for photographers. There's all kinds of model groups and stuff like that. It's a great work. It's a great way to kind of get into the business of networking, especially when you're new. So use social media, but use it properly. If you're on Twitter, engage with people. Don't just use it as an aggregate to flip your stuff because you'll find you'll get less engagement than if you actually comment on stuff and look and like people's posts. I'm not a fan of Facebook myself, but I, I mean, I don't really use it, but I do know anytime I spend any kind of time and go there and make a post and do engagements, like I have almost 5,000 people on my Facebook personal page. I have another 1,500 on my Facebook photography page, and I don't really use it. So I'm kind of um, not taking advantage of the audience that I have there. So I've been trying to be active on all my social media platforms a little bit better. So obviously these tools are great for promoting your work, for building your brand and helping you build out your online presence. Share your work regularly. Share something a few times a week. You don't have to necessarily post every day, but you should post as often as you can. Posting regularly, I've fallen into the trap where I've stopped posting regularly. I've kind of just been off of it. You lose tons of followers and the algorithm sees that it's kind of a dead account and then just stops feeding you. So you do kind of have to feed your social media so you don't your accounts don't die. The next genius thing that I started kind of recently and had I known the benefit of what I'm about to drop on you, I would have done it years and years and years ago. So if you're a new photographer, do this today. Today. Start building an email list. This is something that is very easy and it is free. Build an email list. The thing that's amazing about join my mailing list is people are opting in. They're opting in to that. I want correspondence from you. Yes, please. I like your work. Email me. There anybody who you're a fan of, any mailing list that you guys have joined, any time that you've given your email address and said, yes, I do want to know when you update. That's the same thing that we're doing right now. We're trying to collect people's email addresses and have them have an opportunity to basically opt in to us collecting their email addresses so we can start sending them the things that whether it's our discounts, whether it's our, hey, I'm traveling into your city, or hey, there's this new work. These are what we call super fans. Super fans have the potential to turn into super clients. We don't know who these fans are. Some of them could be clients. They could be watching how your work is developing. So collecting email addresses is super 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 important you can see here i have on my website join my mailing list and when you click join my mailing list you get uh <laughs> the promise of great content and i get an email i get a name i only want um your first name that's fine if you don't want to give me the first and last name it has my socials and now i have their email and I've been taking that those email addresses and now I'm about to send a huge digest of what's been happening since I started this email list about a month ago. So MailChimp, Constant Contact, there's so many free avenues for you to be getting that join my mailing list link. I use MailChimp. I use the free version. I also, I have, you know, 5,000 people in my contact list but when you're collecting contacts for 30 years it's like who's a new email address who's old? i don't want to just take all my emails and dump them in there i don't think it's fair to basically like put people on a mailing list without them asking so i'm, st I'm starting fresh i'm starting fresh and that list is growing incredibly quickly having people being able to opt in to getting your correspondence is genius and then 
you have to send correspondence to them. So, which rolls into the next thing, which is reaching out to potential clients. How do we reach out to potential clients? When do we reach out to potential clients? Woo! Pen. So, reaching out. Reaching out to potential clients. If I was your agent, I would be proactively reaching out to potential clients on your behalf. I would include pitching your services to brands, businesses. I would be responding to all the correspondence that comes back. And I'd be building relationships with potential clients. Because I'm not your agent, you have to be the one who's researching the leads and using LinkedIn, using Facebook, using Instagram, and as I mentioned earlier, physical businesses in your area. It's okay to reach out to somebody if you have something that you believe that that person may need. I'm talking if it's a hair salon, like I said earlier, and you're a photographer that can shoot hair amazingly, start reaching out to hair salons. If you shoot amazing headshots and you kind of have that actor headshot, that Hollywood headshot look down, reach out to casting agencies, reach out to talent agencies, reach out to modeling agencies in your area and start offering your services as like, hey, let me shoot your people. Let me start doing headshots. It's important to build these relationships. It's super, super important. Later on in this list, I'm gonna to talk to you about other ways to build in-person relationships with people, but we have to have the confidence to reach out to somebody with an email with a, uh, a a personal note, postcards is another, like using print is not dead. If you use a postcard and it's the right image and you send to the right person, the potential that you have to be able to get work from that is incredible. So create a way that you reach out as well as create a day that you reach out. I like to put a calendar together. I call it outward reach. It's just in my um, iCal and I have days. It's called outward reach where I, I spend the afternoon searching for people that I could do work for and sending messages out to them and be like, hey, I'm Cardi. Here's my website. Just worked blah, blah, blah. I also make videos blah, blah, blah. And it's like these people usually reply and it's a great way for you to actually just catch jobs and imagine if you're the client and you have bad photography and you're like holy shit i definitely need to like at some point find a photographer to and like you're overwhelmed and then someone just messages you and they're like hey dude i see your photography's garbage let me help you with photography i got you now you're like oh my god thank god you messaged me like i i was just overwhelmed with trying to find someone to do this for me you being the one who sends that email on that right day to that person that you've researched, that you know needs your services, that you know you can help, that's a double thank you moment. We always have to be looking for double thank you moments as creatives. And if we can help a client and, and us shooting, we're making money, so it helps us, but it helps the client so much because we've relieved so much pressure from them and also delivered it at um, a reasonable price. Big brains. So reach out to potential clients. And again, know that it don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to send an email. Calling people is a little stranger because People aren't expecting phone calls these days, especially from strangers. So my suggestion, rather than just calling somebody, try an email, try an email. And again, that email should include three to five photographs that are completely targeted to something that they would need. They could use right away. Meaning if they, were, if they own a cafe, it's photographs of the last cafe you shot. It's amazing. Great customers, great um, people who work there, great storefront. The place just looks amazing. It's great images for social media. You also shot little reels and stuff like that. Now you take that work that you did for that other cafe to the new cafe. And you're like, look what I did for this other cafe. Oh my God. I love it. Do it for us. How much? Right. So um, it's OK to reach out to people when you have a plan, when you have a plan and you've done the research, reaching out to people is super, super, super easy. All right. 
the next genius thing. And again, um, I, I'm, I'm acting as if like I just discovered some of these things, but I've managed to kind of run a business without doing many of the things that are typical on like a business plan when I first started my business, like way back in the day. But I did things like I had a party. I threw uh, a, an art party with my brother. I put work on the wall. My brother put paintings on the wall. We invited everybody. We gave away free drinks and I did a social party. And that's how people heard about me and saw my work. Back in the day, there was no website. So <laughs> there were no websites. There was no social media. So you actually had to physically get in front of people to have them know you. So the next thing, I would suggest blogging. I touched on this. Um, I touched on this earlier, but I would suggest blogging. Blogging is something that is super, 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 super important. And the reason is for SEO. It's kind of genius because every time you make a blog post, if you're using a blog that's attached to your website, Every time you post, it re-indexes to Google and it re-sends all your data to Google. It tells Google that your website is super active. So blogging is genius. You have to be posting to your website as often as you can. But again, adding a blog, this is something that I would highly, highly, highly recommend. My blog is called A Life Behind the Camera. And... I, this is a bit of an experiment for me. I'm seeing like, what would it be like if I started to write a little bit about my photography? What about if I shared insights and some humor and some thoughts? Like there's no place for this type of work to go on my website. This is why it's so amazing to have a blog. This is personal work, stuff that I shoot for myself and I'm able to write about it. I'm able to try new techniques i'm able to shoot without pressure so having a place like this where i can kind of just mess around with techniques is kind of genius now i suggest using this new platform called substack the reason is you see these little locks right there and the little lock right there it allows you to have subscribers so if you want to see my content, if you want to be notified when I upload new content, you have to subscribe. When you subscribe, I get your email address. And anytime I post a new thing, I have the choice to email everybody or just have them discover it because they're subscribed to me in their feeds. I choose to email people. I write nice stuff. I send it out every Saturday morning. Since I've done this, my engagement here is insane. I started this literally two weeks ago. I have like 30 subscribers. I have paid subscribers already. I have mine set up. So if you're free, you can see the latest post. And if you're a paid subscriber, you can see all my posts. And I'm going to start doing paid only posts next week where I'm giving downloads, I'm giving special insight to photographers that I don't give anywhere else. Um, sometimes it's stuff that I talk about here, but I'm also gonna be including contracts, downloads, model releases, like exclusive stuff that it's not quite as easy to share anywhere else, but I'm gonna make it available to the people who choose to subscribe to me on Substack. So I suggest starting a blog, Use your blog to gather a following. Those people who are subscribed to your blog, you can also move them into your other mailing list and your main mailing list where you're collecting email addresses. You can also move them into your blog followers. So they're also getting content. It's kind of genius. I started doing it um, a month ago and it's working. Again, it's great for SEO and it's also great for networking because Substack is one of those categories. I mean, one of those platforms now that if you go to um, if you go to Substack and you just do a where's my oh you can't put your mouse on your your pen on the tablet and expect your mouse to work. Just do a search for photographers on Substack. Um, look at this. This is 
and just how the engagement launched three months ago, hundreds of paid subscribers launched six months ago, three years ago. This is something that it's rare because Substack only started around three years ago, but the amount of photographers that are joining two months, seven months, a month ago, three years, again, rare, two years, rare, three years, rare. Um, but most of them you're going to see are just starting hundreds of paid subscribers, hundreds of paid subscribers, hundreds of paid subscribers launched a month ago. So hundreds of paid subscribers. So this is the money. This is the genius if you're a photographer. And I hope that I'm the one that's bringing you today Substack because it's a genius platform for you to be using to share and blog and um, have subscribers and grow a following. It's kind of genius. All right. So networking, which again, I keep touching on networking, but networking is something that on this whole business plan, on this whole business model, how you have to be thinking as a photographer, networking is so important. You need to be likable. And when you're networking, that's when people see your likability. And I'm gonna put likability um, because it's so important with what we do. We're, we're in the people business. Whether you shoot people or not, we still have to deal with people on a regular basis when it comes to doing this photography. So it's super important for us to be collaborating. It's important for us to be networking with other creatives. Also, when we're doing this, we're getting our names out there and we're also building a, a portfolio. You have to reach out to other photographers. You have to reach out to models. You have to reach out to makeup artists if you're trying to shoot that type of work um, in your area and see if you guys can work together on a project. I have people reaching out to me on social media every week, makeup artists, models, people who are like, oh my God, Cardi, I'd love to shoot with you. You can selectively say, yes, I would love to shoot that person. That person has a great look. That person I could do great work with. And other people, no, you're not someone who I would be willing to shoot for free because I don't think it would help my portfolio. Like you can be selective. You don't have to shoot every single person who asks you to do photos. It's also important to collaborate with other creatives. If there's a photo walk in your area, go on the photo walk. If there, if you see other photographers walking down the street with your camera, be like, hey, I'm a photographer too. What do you shoot? Like be friendly about it. There's no competition when it comes to creativity. You, the work that you do, no one else can do. The work that that person that's doing that's beside you also with your camera, you can't do the work that they're doing. So don't even try. Know that Two photographers can go out on the same day and shoot in the same locations and come up with completely different photography. So it's okay. Other photographers and collaborating with other photographers actually motivates you. This is why I have um, a Discord. This is why I have a Discord. That's why I started my own photography community for you guys to be able to network. It's super, super, super important for you guys to hang out with other people we're doing what you're trying to do. It's called group think. If Julie learns something about retouching, or if Julie finds a video and she learns something about retouching that is just genius, Julie quickly is going to incorporate that into her work. Then she's going to come to the Discord and she's going to share that video that was so profound for her where she leveled up her work and she's going to post it in the resources section. And then everybody who's in the Discord, which is like 250 people, they're all going to collectively watch that video and all learn the information that Julie has just learned and incorporated into her work. So that's something that I think that we all have to be thinking about as far as group think and using resources and using networking, not just um, to benefit like, hey, what is this going to get me? Is money going to come from me? But also, are you providing value for people? Are you providing value? As a photographer, are you providing value? Are you giving insight? Are you giving tips? Are you helping other photographers that are at a lower level than you? It, it's important. The more that we decide to pay it forward, the more that we decide to be transparent rather than... Transparency is the new meta. 
people who hire you want to know everything. They want to know behind the scenes. They want to see behind the scenes. They want to see you shoot. They want to hear you talk. They want to see how passionate you are about photography. People aren't hired anymore just on a photograph. They're not hired just from Instagram, especially when it comes to the real money. You're going to be researched. People are going to research you. So it's important for you to follow all these steps. You can see how important an online presence is. You can see how important it is to um, be of service to people. The more selfless you are as a photographer, the more you'll work. It's just straight, selfless, honestly, egoless. That's the angle. Um, the next thing I would highly suggest, and again, not enough photographers do it. Not, a photo not enough photographers do this. But the next thing, I'm doing it. Um, Peter McKinnon's doing it. Maddie's doing it. Jamie Windsor's doing it. Sean Tucker is doing it. Um, and that is using video. Using video for marketing. Video's a, a weapon. Oh, video. <laughs> video is a weapon. Honestly, as a photographer, as a creative, video is a weapon honestly and the reason is because it is such a powerful tool you can stop somebody dead in their tracks with the video yes you can do that with photography but again in 2023 people look at photographs for like three seconds back when photographs were tangible when you could hold them in your hand when it's on a magazine page even on a magazine flip 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 but when you can physically hold a print, when you can tangibly hold a print, you stare at it just a little bit longer, right? So video is that thing that we can make that can get people to stare at our work for just a little bit longer. Using video for marketing is essential for photographers to stay competitive, to attract new clients. Also, Video tends to have higher engagement than, than photographs. And video can also be um, shared easily on social media platforms, making it a very effective way to reach a wider audience and grow your brand. Imagine you have an idea, you have a promotion, you make a video, you put one thing out and it's you talking to many people, just like the way that you recorded it. it it's video is an insane tool. I just made a video on style. Imagine that video right now lives on YouTube. It's out there. People are watching it and then people can see that I'm live because YouTube is starting to make rings. If you watch a video, the creator, their avatar, <clears throat> if they're live, there's going to be a ring around it and it says live. So you can click that ring and it'll bring you directly into the live stream. So that's something that YouTube's going to incorporate. So essentially, <clears throat> if you think about that, every video that I've made, Every short that I've made, any ever that's on this platform are all out marketing Steve Cardi as a photographer. Every video that Peter McKinnon's made, why is Peter McKinnon the most famous photographer right now? Is his work, does his work equal the level of fame that he has? Fuck no. But why? Because he uses video as a weapon. And he knows it. And he that's why his other site is called a pirate ship. Because he knows this is like he's pillaging. He's literally pillaging because he has millions of, of views. People watching, buying his presets. And if you go to his website, all it is is shit for you to buy. If you want to look at his photography, well, you got to look at Instagram. Which is incredibly strange. But you can see his business model is not based on photography. His business model is based on YouTube. Like that's his business model. He does not need to make any photography and get hired at all because his business model is photographers watching his YouTube videos and then that monetizes him, which makes him be able to have the money to make more crazy YouTube videos, get sponsors. Sponsors then pay him to make these videos. So he actually doesn't have to do photography at all. And it's a photography channel. So 
it's kind of it's kind of strange for me. I, I'm trying to break YouTube and do it differently. I'm trying to help directly and and engage and allow you guys to ask me stuff and just pay it forward. It's different. It's different. And for me, again, I make zero at this point. So maybe I should adopt what Peter McKinnon's doing. <laughs> Personally, I think this is way more beneficial and way more helpful for you guys. And I know it'll fly. By the way, if this content's helping you, hit the like button, share it with a friend. Know that um, video is a weapon. And obviously, we can use video to demonstrate our photography skills. We can use video for behind the scenes. Um, which is genius. You can do tips and tutorials. If you're a genius on Lightroom, if you're a genius in post-production, whatever you're an expert in with your photography, especially because earlier on you learned that you should be a specialist. So now that you're a specialist in macros or um, flowers or whatever it is, there's a way that you do your specialty. People want to see that. So that's when you should be making videos and then using those videos to market you as a photographer. It's kind of genius. There's also services like Skillshare, although Skillshare is kind of basically a scam. You should just be making YouTube videos. If you're wanting to you to like teach people something, just do it on YouTube. Offer your, ser offer your services, be of service to people, and um, it'll come around, honestly. Adding video to your marketing strategy, not only does it help you build a brand like people know you, but it also it ultimately grows your photography business. Whether you're a beginner or professional, incorporating video into your marketing, it's a very, very powerful tool for success. If you just look at my site and if you go to About Me, the first thing that I hit you with is a video. And when you watch this video, it goes right, sorry that that's so loud, it goes right into, um, it's actually, you guys wouldn't even have heard that. It goes right into a video where it's basically a video bio where you learn about me, you see photos of it. Like it's such a grabby, like engaging video. I use it on my YouTube as like my promo. It's probably the best video that's been done on me, but I put it here because people who want to learn about me, they do they want to read all this text or do they just want to watch this video, which is 90 seconds? They're going to watch the video. So I'm using video here to market myself on my website and it works incredibly. So Start using video. Start getting comfortable with talking to camera. I've made some content on how important it is for photographers to get comfortable speaking to camera. It's so important. Getting comfortable speaking to camera ends up making it when you're in front of a stranger, when you're asking a stranger to take a photo, like all these times where you would feel nervous. If you get used to speaking to camera, even if you don't upload it, no one sees it. You're just recording yourself talking to camera and you're seeing how weird and quirky you are, but you're working through those problems. Do that early because when you're in, an, in, in a shoot and there's 30 people behind you asking you stuff like you need to have that comfort when you're under pressure. For me, when I'm under pressure, like... I shot Casey and Jojo in LA. There was 60 people behind me watching. I've been on sets and I'm working. I shot in Italy, in Verona, in Romeo and Juliet, in Juliet's balcony, okay? There was 20 Italian police with their arms linked holding 10,000 people back from going into Juliet's balcony and I had a model in Juliet's balcony and I was on the ground with full space moving around freely photographing Juliet in Juliet in a place that you're not allowed to shoot you're not allowed to photograph I had Italian royalty gave me access to this thing crazy stories make sure you go see that nodding blue photo shoot on my website in my commissions section but um literally we have to um I kind of went on a <laughs> on a rant there but know that um know that photography can bring us into the craziest places and like i'm blown away by where my camera has taken me i'm just 
when I think about it, I'm still like that 14 year old kid that saw photography for the first time. I'm 52. I've been doing this for since I was 14. I've been making photographs and I still get like butterflies. Like I love photography so fucking much. I like I don't know if there's anybody that's more enthusiastic about the craft of photography than I am. You might be, but um I just love photography and I also love helping. And I think that like I think it's important for photographers to like get out of their head and get off their ego and just like think of you as a service. Like you're here to help other people. That's what you're doing with your photography. Photography is therapy. It helps people. And um, I think photographers need to be nicer. You know, honestly, I'm, uh, I just love this so much. I, I'm into it so much. And uh, I just want to like push my enthusiasm for photography, my passion for photography, like onto you guys a little bit, you know? <sighs> All right. Video is a weapon. Did you catch that one? <laughs> video is a weapon. I'm using this video right now as a weapon. You guys should be doing that too. All right. Next. Print is not dead if you use it correctly. Print. We need to print stuff. And I, I don't mean just make photos for your walls and like have stuff like printed. Yeah, you, sure, you do that too. It's important to do that. But I mean like making books, making postcards, making physical portfolios and having things that you can show in a meeting that is not just your computer or your laptop and your website on a screen, which they've seen already show if you're going to show your work in person show them something that they can't see online genius show them something that you put together just for them you know literally hey you know what i made these 10 prints just because i was meeting you today yes it cost you a hundred dollars to make 10 prints to go show this gentleman but you put them in a box they're loose and now he gets to handle them like you've made 10 prints. You spent $100 to make 10 11 by 14s to show your latest work to an art director. Guess what? That work doesn't exist online anywhere. It's nowhere. It just It's just these prints. And you tell him that. And you're like, yeah, I printed these just for you. I thought that you'd totally appreciate this type of photography based on your magazine, your advertising agency, your past work, the research that I've done on you, obviously. And the, the client, the art director, the photo editor is like, holy shit. Wow. Oh my God. I love this one. This is amazing. These aren't online. It's like, no, I just printed them this morning. Like I just wanted to share them with you. I really want to work with you. Amazing. Oh my God. This is my favorite one. Guess what you say then you can have it. It's yours. Let me hear. Let me sign it. And you sign the print. Hey Rob, such a great time. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet me today. I hope this finds a frame and finds a happy place on your wall. Boom on the, and now you give this guy this print in an envelope. Now, do you think that guy's going to remember you? Do you think that guy's going to remember you? That cost you $10, right? $10. You gave that person something that they said, oh my God, that's my favorite one. You can have it. Here, let me sign it. Now you're giving a personal connection. You're writing a note. It's like you just got that person. Now that person is your client. They might not have a job for you today, but... When they have money to pay someone to make photos, who are they calling? They see your print on the wall every day. Print in promotional material isn't dead. Using a $10 11 by 14 to give to somebody is worth a hundred websites. Cause that's like people who see your website. Yes, they're real people, but no, we don't know who they are. When you target someone and do a gesture like that, guaranteed work. So that's why going back to research, it, it, it's so important. And me putting the, together this whole flow, I hope is super helpful. Print and promotional material for meetings, leave behinds, business cards. Like I have um, a video on my channel. You should watch it. It's called Our Business Cards Dead. Yes, the thumbnail's horrible, but I'll make a better one. I promised myself I was going to redo my thumbnails this month, but, um, or some of them, some of my older ones. Watch that 
is our business cards dead? Watch that video. There's an offer code for my business cards also in the description of this video. But if you watch that video, you'll see why um, print isn't dead and how I use it. Next thing, you have to in person do some shit, okay? You gotta leave your house. You gotta leave your house and attend some industry events. Industry and social events. It's important for us to leave our houses, get out of our flats and go out and do some socials. Like have uh, a something that you say when someone's like, oh, hey, what do you do? Oh, I'm a photographer. What do you shoot? Well, I shoot uh, people who you might know. I've shot lots of people, lots of big faces that you know. I shoot for magazines. You know those photos in magazines? Those are, I make those. Really? Who have you shot? Oh my God. Um, wow. I, I don't want to, I don't, if I tell you who I've photographed, it's going to sound like I'm bragging. So it's better if I don't really, who have you photographed? Um, like paparazzi. I know all of my photographs. I get hired and paid by magazines to shoot these people here. Why don't you just look at my website? Like I, I try to create, like you create this, like now they're dying to know who it is that I've shot and how I shoot them. So now they want to go to my website. <clears throat> the reason that um, in person interactions are so important is because you're able to quickly exchange contact information and grab them. I use this thing called Tappy, which you basically just tap the phone and it beams your information to them. And it also has this thing where it, it says, add to contacts, which is if they're on iOS, it's pretty crazy. Like it basically has this thing where it says add to contacts. So all I do is tap them, they get this, and it has all my socials, my phone number, my portfolio, and they can just add to contacts and I'm in their phone. So when I do street portraits, when I do a meeting, when I'm out socializing and you so show people your social like you can just tap and like it's so slick it's such a cool way to be able to and believe me at some point apple will incorporate this built into their phone so you can just tap phones and your contacts um so that'll happen but in the meantime there's this dot that you can buy for 20 dollars, and it's such a conversation starter Everybody wants to know, how did you do that? That's so sick. I need to have that. Oh my God, that's such a great way to shit. Like now people are talking about that. They're looking at your socials. They're adding you, like they're using all the features. Now you're in your, their phone and it says photographer. It's got your silly picture so they can see, oh yeah, that's the guy that I met. This is blah, blah, blah. And uh, it's not only for Apple, Les is asking. It's also for... Um, it's also for Android, but I think you have to have the ability to tap, which might be on some, it's not on every phone, but if you don't tap, it also gives you um, a QR code where you can just go like this. They can just shoot it and then it gives them that same, it gives them the same experience. It's just, it's not done with a tap, it's done with a QR. So. It's super smart. And again, having something like this, having these Moo business cards, having something that you can physically give somebody, it's like a gift. So using networking as a place and you talk to people, don't give cards to everybody. Don't be tapping everybody. But if there's somebody who has the potential to that you could do something for or they could do something for you, share information, you know. So attend industry events. Networking is super important to your marketing strategy. Um, trade shows. I don't really go to trade shows, but fashion week, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's what you do. You go to fashion week. If there's like a menswear collection, a runway show, a gallery show photographer, um, like we have something called contact, which is in May, which is photography month here in Toronto. So that's when you go to shows you, cause you're a photographer, you're out looking at other photographers work. Great way to network. Um, great way to use tappy and a great way to like, get yourself out there. It's super important. You'll find every time you go out to an event, you'll find five contacts, five contacts that end up, you end up knowing for your whole life, you end up working for like five times every time you actually physically go out. If you pay attention, anytime you go to an industry event, so industry events, do it, do it, do it. Next promotion, 
and discounts. Um, I'm sorry, guys, that this is taking long, but if you think you can, I, if you think that I'm going to give you a full marketing plan for your business, a full marketing plan, and and all these ideas and all of these insights, and then also give it to you in like eight minutes, it's just not possible. So this is why I do long form content so we can deep dive on stuff and you can actually really get the kind of benefits that I can't give you in a five minute video, you know? All right, so next, promos and discounts. Offering promos um, is genius. And I'm going to show you how I offer promos and discounts. I do it every time. I do it every time. Um, if I get a call and I have a photo shoot and or someone who's potentially looking to book me for a photo shoot, they're going to have questions. And I'm also going to answer tons of questions. They're gonna, they're gonna want to know if I can do X, Y, and Z. I'm gonna say I can do X, Y, and Z. I can also do this, this, and this. So through the conversation, you learn all the things that they need. You exchange, hey, guess what? I also can shoot video. So here's, it's called upselling. Um, obviously we all, we all worked at McDonald's on, <laughs> we all worked at McDonald's. I worked at McDonald's. I learned about upselling. Um, believe me, upselling is easier than you think when it comes to photography upselling. So it's just about, um, and again, this whole talk is about promos and discounts, but it's also, it's also about language. So someone, if someone hires me for a photo where they want, they think photos only. Um, if they're an actor, um, I ask them if they have a screen test. Uh, do you have a screen test? And they're gonna be like, uh, I was thinking about it, but you, I'm like, so you're an actor, but you're now I'm asking you if you, if you have on camera stuff and you don't, why are we not shooting a screen test as well as your headshots? Uh, 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 like, so now, you're you're actually challenging people who are like i want to be an actor okay cool so let's get you on video talking and acting out a scene so um the for the people um welcome michael for the people who um know uh the acting scene they're gonna be like yeah cool i have like i have all these scenes that i've rehearsed blah, blah, blah. let's do it I, I i'll happily how much does it cost to do a screen test so now if you're charging 300 to do headshots you're like it's another 300 for the screen test they're like cool you know or you're like and you know what here's where the discount comes in <laughs> genius here's how the discount comes in you're offering now to do you're offering to do the photos for call it um oops i said 300 so you offer to do the photos for 300 right but you're also pitching video and that video's um, one minute, right? A one minute video cut, probably four, five, six cut. You can put this together super easy, right? So you say, as it's called this as easy as the photos. So we're also gonna call this, so that the total of this is 600, right? So he went to you trying to spend 300. Now you have him at 600, but in order to close, you say you'll do it for 500. And that's that's the first like added value where now for 500, they're getting one photo look and one video look. And you know, you're spending maybe 90 minutes. Now you're also building your video portfolio. You're building your screen test portfolio so you can now take that screen test that this guy just paid you for and use it to sell other actors for shooting more video screen tests right um also here's another upsell um and again this client ends up going for it that video now has at the end video by steve cardi stevecardi.com so now Anytime anyone sees that video, they see at the end of the video that I shot it. So now more actors come just based on that video being out there because as you remember from before, video is an insane weapon for marketing. So 
every video that you shoot markets you to anybody who needs videos because videos live on they live they have way more staying power than photographs so another example corporate corporate people um they like deals so um you have to incentivize and discounts are a great incentive to get people to close so i give incentives meaning um a corporate client calls me and they have 11 people to shoot headshots in the office okay now i if i'm shooting one i charge 500 per person i charge 500 because it's one person right just roughly now if i'm shooting two if i'm shooting two it drops down to uh i i don't have my prices in my head but imagine it drops down to like 400. i'll actually show you what my prices look like and how i do it and how i hook people um because having anchor pricing is something that we're going to get into um in future episodes but let me just show you uh pricing here it is headshots and how i use anchor pricing so you're seeing here my headshots i have i'm gonna hide my camera package one package two package three now um this is not corporate so i'll go here because that's what we we're talking about corporate package one one person one outfit roughly 50 frames two finals 500 bucks okay if i'm Package two is two to five people. So I'm shooting that many people, it drops down to this price. If I'm shooting um, six to 10 people, it drops down to this price. If I'm shooting more than 11 people, it drops down to this price. So there's value in the client getting me to shoot more people. Now, guess what? at the during the shoot they're like oh my god can you shoot group shots and you're like we didn't talk about group shots because <laughs> they're thinking it's just photos you're here let's just shoot photos that's just photos but having it defined is actually smarter so because that happened to me so often i started to say hey the group shot for two to five people it's an extra 150. six to ten it's an extra 250 11 plus it's an extra 500 and additional files can be got for 50 bucks so having this kind of clear concise pricing system and also if you can click all of these and just get these individual cards like it's basically value pricing and this helps people understand like what they're getting and also seeing this package next to this package next to this package people usually go for the one that's in the middle i try to set my packages so all of them have value and i often if you're hiring me to shoot one look and you're paying me 250 i might at some point be like hey put that jacket on let me shoot a couple of pictures with you with the jacket now what i've done with just putting a jacket on off taking a hat on off and switching the background in the shoot i've created an, a now another look from one look so they're paying me for one I'm shooting in the same amount of time but i'm kind of giving them two and then what that does what that does is it basically now they, they get one photo included with that one rate. But because I shot that other look and it's so great and I've shot it in such a way that there's headshots, three quarter, full length. There's so many variations. There ends up being 20 photos, 30 photos that they want from one short session the way that I shot it. And then they end up ordering more and they also end up hiring me again because I over delivered. So over delivering and discounts, promotions, it's all super, super, super smart. And um, are all these offers and prices stated as from? It's not necessary because they're actually, that's the actual price. If I'm shooting, um, I say like there's expenses and stuff like that, that like if you're, tra if I'm traveling too far, or out of the regular area, that's extra. If you're asking for extra prints, that's extra. If I have to bring, like there's extras, 
Um, but this is just like to get people on the telephone. You know what I mean? And then we can talk about that. If they're saying they want to make a artist, that's extra. It says there. If they're saying they want a stylist, that's extra. That has nothing to do with me. This is my fees for shooting photos. So that kind of stuff is extra. If they need a studio, I have studio prices and I've baked in and made them inflated because of the inflation of shooting. Um, yeah, I, again, um, Casper says that um, he made it on his website to say from 250. The problem there is that people think, oh, okay, well, it could be 250, but it also could be 500. So I think it's important to like, no, no, the price is 250, but you want a makeup artist. So now it's 250 plus the makeup artist. The price here is, okay, it's 250, you get one print, but you're asking for 10 prints. So it's that price plus the one I include, and you're paying me for nine additional photos, which is another $450. So it's just explained. And then also this whole thing is we're talking about is based on discounts and promos. We can discount high res files very easily because it's just our time retouching and our time in post-production. So if someone orders, if you charge 10, um, if you charge for 10 finals and I charge $50 per, it's $500. If they're asking for 10 extra finals, they might be like, Ooh, okay, so I can't really afford that. It'd be like, okay, so I'll give you 10 finals because you're getting 10. You're not paying $50 per, you're paying $25 per because you're getting 10. So those kinds of bundles and discounts are kind of essential. You can't just be hard priced. This is what it is. Um, be flexible. And also, this is the long game. You're trying to get repeat clients that hire you only, that hire you over and over and over again. Those are the people. It's okay to make a little bit less because you're in it for the long game. And again, the more they hire you, you can be just like, hey, you know what? Um, this shoot that you have that you need me to do because I've shot for you every day for the last half month. I'm going to do this one for free. Don't worry about it. I know you made a mistake. You forgot to shoot this. Don't worry. I got it. You know, like take care of your people and they'll always take care of you. Just be the nice photographer. It's super, super beneficial. All right. We got a couple more things to go here. Um, getting featured in publications is something that I'm often asked, like, how do you get in magazines? First of all, you have to be ready. <coughs> Excuse me. First of all, you have to be ready to shoot for magazines. But getting published is an amazing way. This pen today, I think I have to just face it and buy a new Wacom pen. Getting published. Um, there's so many different ways to get published. And I'm talking in print, actual print magazines which has, although print is slowly dying, it does have like more validity if it's uh, in a physical form with your photo credit than an online print magazine, which unless it's an incredibly reputable online print magazine, like anybody can just design a magazine and throw graphics on top of a photo and call it a published piece. This is why like, print is actually important. And if you are published online, published in a web, the thing that's amazing is the link backs to your site. The link backs are super helpful, but it's only beneficial if that magazine, that online magazine has a presence, has a viewership. Um, it has an audience. If it's getting tons of views and your work being in that online magazine benefits you, then submit your photos. Your photos are just sitting there. They're not doing anything for you. They're not working for you, not in a magazine. So submit photos that you did for something else and that you made no money for. Submit it and let them still make no money, but you're they're in a magazine now and or on an online website. And at least you're now getting linked to your website, which has the potential to get you jobs. So advertising, it's free advertising whenever your photographs go out there for free. I'm um, also, um, don't watermark your photographs. Um, I was gonna make a video on watermarking your photographs. 
photographers need to stop watermarking your photographs. It just stops your photographs instantly from being shared from being shared. Nobody is going to share your photograph if it has your logo on it. Nobody. And it's not advertising. It's not. If you might think it is, but all it's doing is pulling people's eyes away from the actual work. It's distracting. Every watermark is an abomination on the internet. If you see photo by, photo by, photo by, photo by, it's like Richard Avedon. I can look at the biggest, best photographers in the world and their photography is online without watermarks, all of it. And it's like, people aren't going to steal your work. People aren't going to steal your work. And if they are, they wouldn't hire you anyways. And they'd use software to remove the watermark. What you're doing by watermarking your photographs is instantly guaranteeing that your photos just look a little bit uglier than they could by putting that logo on it. You're also designers who who know design and they know photography and they know design those are the people who you're trying to get to hire you designers and photo editors they have their own vision for how text should work with photos so let them imagine how they would put the text on your photo rather than you say hey by the way it's me it's me i shot it hey hello 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 that's what it looks like it literally looks like when you show a photograph rather than allowing the photo to just speak for itself it's you behind being like hey steve cardi i did it steve cardi me woohoo like it's obnoxious it's obnoxious if people want to know who shot the photograph they're going to find out they're going to research and smart money all your photographs are digitally watermarked, meaning if you open that photograph in photograph on in Photoshop on the masthead, it says copyright Steve Cardi photographer because it's baked into the metadata. If anyone's trying to steal your photograph, if it's in the metadata, that's how you catch them. There's no stress. You can use Google search to find your photograph stolen, but I guarantee anybody who has watermarked photographs out there, they're not not being taken and used on other websites and shared because um, they're not they're not being shared because the watermark is like a deterrent. It's just like, don't share this photo. Like I put watermarks on my proofs when I they're unretouched photos that I don't want people to share. Watermarks are not advertising. They are a distraction. They actually stop people from seeing your photo because they just see the watermark and then they just so if you're wondering why your photos aren't getting attention your website with your watermarked photos you'll never see a legitimate photographer working photographer with watermarks in their photos they're all digitally baked in um two cents in a bag of chips um last 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 thing um oh by the way how to get featured in publications because um i kind of went on a watermark tangent you can reach out, just like I said earlier, reaching out to potential clients, reach out to potential publications. If you have a bunch of cool work on cafes and you notice this magazine does profiles on cafes every month, start reaching out to them and being like, hey, I shoot cafes, you're profiling cafes, maybe I could profile a cafe for you. Like, it has to be a double thank you moment. There has to be a reason for the person that you're reaching out to, to receive you. There has to be a reason. And you can't just willy nilly, arbitrarily like, Hey, do you need a photographer? It's like, dude, no. Why are you messaging me? Like target people who you know need you. And, and you know, because you've looked at their social, you've looked at their website, you know, their photography and their design and their ideas are shambles and you can help them reach out to those people, which is all about doing research. A couple of last things. Um, I don't use online ads, but there's many photographers who've become very successful by using Google ads for their photography. When you search something that's like them, they just keep coming up and, and you see them top. I usually don't. Um, pitching a concept, Kofi's asking, is pitching a concept different? It's a very good question and I'm glad that you touched on that. Pitching is the same as the reach out. Pitching is the same as the reach out. You're using pitching and just a, in a different language than I was calling outward reach. Uh, how I was shaping it is you research, you know what the people are working on and then you tailor work to show them that is work that they could use. 
one step further is you essentially shoot spec. You shoot something that I've shot this, I've done all the expenses, I've put it together. Here are the photographs. Now, do you want to publish that? Like that's what you do when it comes to reaching out with route to magazines is you submit. That's what I, you're calling it a pitch. I'm calling it a submission. Pitches are kind of based and that language is based on advertising agencies where you want to shoot for Coca-Cola. You do a whole campaign on your own on Coca-Cola. You do print photographs, you do a commercial, you do it all yourself, and then you package it, design it, and then try to get a meeting with that ad agency that has Coca-Cola as a client. And then you pitch your your concept, your visuals to that ad agency that has that client that you're pitching and then see if you can A, help them with their ideas and they hire you to execute them or they see that you have an understanding of their brand and then they hire you to shoot something else. So that's a great, um, that's a great idea, but I just shaped it a little bit different. Pitching, the language is mostly for advertising agencies and um, people who are watching here are not quite, I think, ready to be pitching to ad agencies yet. So I just wanted to talk about um, like uh, getting published magazines a little bit, like a little bit of a lower level. All right. Um, the last, last, last thing is Google My Business. Google My Business is genius genius and an incredible tool that not enough photographers are using. Google My Business, um, it's basically your Google profile. It's super easy to set up. If you look at my business on Google, it's just this bar that you're trying to like actually find and it gives you reviews. You can also post photographs, which I started like doing this, like, I don't know, at some point last year, but you can post photographs. You can make, it's like, it's your own business's social media, like literally. And if anybody searches, um, Steve Cardi photographer, not only do you come up first, but it'll give reviews, your services, your hours, like all the stuff that you feed into it. And then the back end that you get from this and the analytics are absolutely insane. Bruh. <laughs> absolutely insane. So I'm um, all about Google My Business, it's super, super genius. Um, Google My Business and Google Ads, they do provide services for us to be able to use and um, get on it. That's the end of the list, guys. That is literally a, a very comprehensive marketing plan. I hope you guys made notes. I hope you guys have been taking this in just to give you guys just a quick review as far as the things that you need to be doing to start marketing your business in 2023 and really actually get it going, really get traction. I'm gonna give you a quick, quick review. My number one recommendation was specializing. Specializing makes you higher demand. It makes your work look super targeted. And again, be the car photographer, be the portrait photographer, be the wedding photographer, be a specialist in your field, be the street photographer, be the fashion photographer. That is genius. Specialize, number one. Define your market was number two. Once you specialize, it becomes super easy to see where your specialty slots in. Super easy because I shoot cars, I go to dealerships, I go to car brands, I go to magazines that feature cars. Like it's like, it's, it's a no brainer. Specializing and defining your market work hand in hand. The problem that many photographers find they don't specialize because they don't specialize defining their market becomes like, and then they start adding things that they can shoot because they're not getting any hits. And it's like, then they're a generalist and they're shooting weddings and parties and babies and cars and events. And 
they're it just it's like yeah you're making money with your camera but you're not making any kind of statements and you're making forgettable work that's just all over the place so specializing and defining your target market work hand in hand next you got to create a portfolio website obviously like your website is your store online so creating a portfolio website is genius that's the next thing boom 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 your portfolio website helps you draw um helps you build a strong online presence which is the next thing is growing that online presence using social media platforms instagram twitter facebook um, there's places, LinkedIn, there's places that you can use to promote and network with other people who could hire you on social media. You actually have to just use it. Don't be a broadcaster only. Be, be someone who's helpful. If you see someone who you can answer a question, like be of service to people, be of service to people on social media, and you'd be super surprised how much it grows. Build an email list, use a service like MailChimp Constant Contact to like collect addresses of people who want to opt in to learning more about what you're doing. Those people have the potential to turn into clients. So it's genius to be collecting those email addresses. You could set that up literally in 15 minutes, having a link on your website that says join my mailing list. Reaching out to potential clients, we got a great um, comment about pitching, but just reaching out to potential clients um, in general. Um, target, do your research, know what these people are looking for, know what they need, and then provide them with what they need. That's kind of just how business works. As a photographer, if you see cafes in your area, they have bad social media, they need social media images, you could make a living having four, five, six, seven, businesses that you just shoot social media photographs for there's all kinds of different angles but you got to do the work like i'm giving you all kinds of different angles you can't just be sitting on your hands wondering why no one's hiring you starting a blog is genius starting a blog helps you go through the process you can be <clears throat> writing about your photography you can be making photographs you can be pushing personal work and it gives you a place to share this stuff you will find an audience for it even if you don't it's great for you as therapy to shoot something new every week and talk about it look at your photographs start to understand why you do the things that you do it'll help you develop your style and there's a video that i put up this morning on style you should definitely watch that one um collaborating with other creatives collaborate with other creators put yourself out there hang out with another photographer don't be shy to hang out with another photographer go on photo walks do workshops like interact with other people who are doing creatives it's kind of genius network with other people it's group think this person knows something that you don't they're like hey i noticed that you're doing this 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 and this and it's not working i figured that out two years ago this is what i do now here learn this and then you're like oh my god that's genius now you do that and the only reason that you know that because you hung out with another person who's trying to do the same thing that you are so network with other creatives start using video I'm doing it right now using video using video 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 blah, 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 blah. video 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 is a goddamn weapon. If you're a photographer and you're a specialist and you know your shit, why are you not using video? Video is a weapon. Use video. Start getting comfortable with talking to the camera. Video is evergreen content, meaning it lives out there long after you do. Your video that you make today can help someone two years from now. So yes, pay it forward but also you're demonstrating your personality your skills and your likability people seeing you animated doing all this shit like in real life gives them that connection that they know you and people hire who they know people hire who they like and you have the opportunity to show people how likable you are by using this tool that we call video Print promotional material is not dead. Use print like a goddamn weapon. Give that print to that person that you're in a meeting with, that person that loves your photographs, that you got to show your photographs, that first time you go to a meeting, give someone something, give a gift, bring them a t-shirt, give them a, like, just give them something. 
a print is what we're trying to sell our photography services. So spending $10 and making an 11 by 14, framing it for another 20 bucks and giving it to that person that just gave you your first job. Genius. Use print as a weapon, just like you're using video as a weapon as well. Obviously, you got to attend stuff, go out, industry, socials, go, go out to fashion week, go to shows. If there's nothing happening in your area, just go walking down the street with your goddamn camera. Get out of your comfort zone. Go out there. Shit happens when you go outside with your camera. Shit happens when you go outside with a notebook, with an idea. Just get yourself out there photographers are the shyest wallflowers ever we want to be quiet and we just click click it's put yourself out there you can be a wallflower all you want but know that no one's going to hire you and you won't make a nickel with your camera you got to put yourself out there um promos and discounts i showed you how i use promos how i upsell and then discount them on the thing now that they did another thing that they want. You know, oh, you want another look? Oh, sure, I can shoot another look. I know I, I told you I was shooting this for 500 for three looks, but now we're shooting another look. So tell you what, I'll do, I'll do that next look for free. Don't worry about it. Really, dude? It's like, yeah, dude, I got you. Don't worry. And then after the fact, that person is going to take that money that they would have paid you for another look and use that to give you money for prints, give you money for high-res files. It's just... Over deliver, always over deliver and you'll always make money at photography. So offering referrals is another thing that I forgot to mention. Getting people like, hey, modeling agency, send me a model, I'll send you a kickback. Or hey, um, like a uh, acting talent agent that has a ton of actors headshots, send them to me. I'll give you 10 bucks for everyone you send me. Like little referral things like that are, th are things that have been done in business since the beginning of business. So don't think that referrals and that kind of vibe doesn't happen still. It happens still. So I hope you guys like that content. Um, I don't think that there's enough marketing and promotion content here on the YouTube at least marketing and and promotion content that's actually valid that you can actually use that i believe would actually help you i hope you guys felt that um this was helpful um it's hard and and the notes that you guys will have to make um after this video are vast i hope that you take the time to watch this video again because i also think that it's so absolutely valid um, Kofi, Casper, Malcolm, Julie, everybody who's been watching today, everybody who this is, Gregory, everybody who this has benefited today, anybody who's said hello in chat, I want to thank you. I want you to know that I have been seeing all your messages coming in, but the importance about this particular content is like, this content needs to be out there. This content needs to be with you guys, the photographers. I believe that I believe that you need a helping hand when it comes to someone to talk to, someone to ask questions, just someone to be like, hey, what do you think about this? Because guaranteed, all of you, you're the best photographer that all of your friends know. You're the best photographer that all your family members know, and none of them can help you. There's nobody who can help you get better all they're saying when you make photographs is, oh my God, you're amazing. So that's what I come in. That's where I come in. And that's why I made this video today. Yes, it's long, but if you follow these steps, there's no way that you won't be working. There's absolutely not a chance that you won't be working. Know that I'm going to be talking about marketing all month. If you guys like these talks, if you like this kind of content, please drop it a like. Please consider subscribing if you're not already. I'm going to be back on Tuesday with some photo reviews. I do know that you guys have some photos in the photo drop, in the photo bomb, in the photo submissions to be looked at. But if you can see how long this video has going on, I want to just cut it here. So People who are watching this and who are finding this online as a tool for marketing, they can take it for that and use it. And then Tuesday, we'll be back 
for some photo reviews. Guys, I hope you guys found this beneficial. You know me, I am Cardi. I am your friendly neighborhood photographer. Please check the description of the video that you're watching. You'll see links for the Discord where I review photos. You'll see all kinds of resources. You'll find all kinds of cool stuff in the Discord. So definitely join the Discord. Please do that. Again, if you like my smiling face and my insights and inspirations, please consider subscribing. We do this shit three days a week, consistent, and the subscribers and the watch time, we are almost at partner, baby, with your help. We will get to partner in the next month or two. All you guys gotta do is keep doing your research, keep watching the content, keep making notes, and don't forget, you get better every single time you look through that little window. I love you. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate you.